So guys, can we have a round of applause for Ben Z? Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I thought I'd start off with a, a couple of uh, questions. Um, how many of you are founders in the room? Yeah, and how many are thinking about it? Brave. Uh, and what else? Anyone else? What, what are the other buckets? What, just here for a good time? <laughs> Great. Um, so, um, I'm Ben. I'm one of the co-founders of Ed Rollo. Um, I was really, uh, when I sat down to think about what I could talk about, uh, I thought, hmm, where should I start? And thankfully, uh, the We Teach Me team put together a good spec on their uh, website. And I got a lot of inspiration from the What You Will Learn section. So I hope you all read that clearly, because that's what I'm sticking to, uh, is what we'll get out of it today. Um, so uh, before I uh, go into everything, I thought um, it's important that you know uh, a bit about me and a bit about Ed Rollo, so you can actually get a bit of understanding of where this, uh, I guess, advice is coming from, or insights are coming from. Uh, so yeah, I'm a father, a husband. I love rice. I use the uh, rice bowl emoji a lot on Slack um, as a way of congr congratulating people, particularly. Um, and, uh, but before all this, uh, at Arolo, um, straight after high school, I did a cadetship at KPMG, which meant I also completed a, a Bachelor of Commerce at Melbourne. Uh, that was interesting, um, as a fresh 18-year-old, uh, putting on a suit and being an auditor and asking a 30-something-year-old person for their cash, you know, accounts receivable uh, logs and being a pest uh, as well. Um, figured out that wasn't for me and uh, moved over to the private wealth industry and Goldman Sachs. And that's where I actually met uh, Duncan and Jeremy, uh, my co-founders at Adrolo. Um, and while we were working there, uh, while I was still working there, uh, that's um, at, <coughs> at uh, night time, I uh, uh, started working on Adrolo. Um, got two children, a uh, three-year-old daughter named Joan and a uh, one-month-old uh, baby boy named Walt. Uh, so yeah, new to the fatherhood thing as well. Um, so a bit about Adrolo, I'll quickly go through this. Uh, our mission is to improve education. Uh, we're very, very passionate about it. Uh, we're starting uh, by building educational resources for high schools in Australia, uh, but that's not what we're going to be doing forever. Um, we've got very uh, ambitious goals, uh, including going global. Um, this is what our product looks like, just to give you an um, insight. Uh, we, we partner with master teachers to create online courses that are mapped to the syllabus, and uh, video lessons look like this. Uh, we've also got a lot of formative assessment or uh, you know, interactive elements to our resource, so it's not just a static watch a video type thing. Um, and uh, students get some amazing feedback through that uh, in terms of how they're going as well. Uh, but one of the most important things that schools love about us is that we provide a lot of um, pre-populated data for them to actually uh, differentiate their teaching practice uh, without having to populate data in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and excitingly, um, we're actually also, uh, what we are, we call ourselves an ed tech company, uh, we're actually printing books. Uh, so we're going back to the future there. Um, and I can talk about that later about why. Um, so, in 2012, in terms of timeline, uh, we started with three co-founders, myself, Duncan and Jeremy. Um, then, uh, in 2013, um, that was the, uh, we got into Startmate, uh, which is a fantastic program. Uh, they run a program in Melbourne and Sydney. I'd encourage you to investigate them and, and go to their uh, information nights. Uh, and that was uh, an enabler for us to actually work full-time on Ed Rollo and uh, have the guts to uh, leave our full-time jobs. Um, and two years after that, we raised the Series A led by Airtree Ventures and Blackbird Ventures. And uh, now we're in over uh, 700 schools and we've got a team of over 70, actually over 80 uh, right now. Um, that's our team. Uh, some are in the room, which is fantastic. Uh, we love what we're doing. Uh, we're a fun bunch of people. Um, so uh, back to the learnings uh, for this evening. Um, I thought I'd break it down into two parts, a quick fire round, and then I'm going to delve into one thing that uh, I'm very passionate about, and I'll save it to later then. Uh, so, quick fire. I'm going to do these really quickly, so please ask me questions about any of these, because I'm literally going to speed through them. Uh, so, taking the leap. Um, it's very daunting. Um, <clears throat> it was a very daunting process for me personally. I didn't want to give up uh, uh, you know, a steady paycheck or, and a potential career in finance, uh, which I was really enjoying. Um, so. Um, I recommend that you keep a full-time job if you can and moonlight on your startup to get started. Um, it also has a benefit of not having to worry about your cash flow uh, situation, which can be very stressful. Uh, we had a period where we weren't paying ourselves anything and it was very tough. Um, so that, that's my advice. Um, I guess a downside to that would be that you probably don't, uh, obviously uh, you're stretched a bit thin 
and you don't learn as fast um, uh, from uh, on your startup or your project. Um, so uh, pros and cons there, but in, in my experience, I found that uh, doing it that way really helped. Um, this is really important uh, in life in general, um, and uh, you need a support network. Um, there are dark days and bright days uh, in life uh, when you're starting a startup. Um, they're, I believe, amplified. Uh, I feel like you feel things a, a lot more. Um, and uh, I truly believe that life's moments are better shared. So uh, please make sure you have a support network there because you are going to have some dark days and you'll need to be able to get through them. And also some bright days that you want to share amazing things uh, with. Um, so I highly recommend you get that in order. Um, <clears throat> next thing is your co-founders really matter. Um, and um, Duncan's on the left there, Jeremy in the middle, uh, me on the right. Um, we, uh, this is a photo from 2013, so a pretty early photo. Um, I was vi luck, by luck, uh, met them when we were at Goldman Sachs together. Um, but um, we've, uh, we're still working together on, the pro on, on Ed Rollo. Um, we've got a fantastic um, working uh, relationship, um, but it didn't just happen. Um, we worked at it. So although we were friends when we initially started, um, we decided that we would actively work on our relationship, which I encourage everyone to do with any important relationship in your life. Um, and uh, we're seeing the benefits of it. So the way we did that was we actually did regular feedback sessions with each other, uh, really candid sessions. The first ones were pretty tame and easy on each other, but they got a lot more brutal. And now we're at a stage where we're literally giving br brutal feedback uh, nicely um, in a live setting. So we're um, at that sort of level. And it's, it's an amazing thing. Um, Next thing is culture. Um, you know, when you're starting something, it might be just you and your co-founder, maybe two other people, you might have team five, whatever. But um, it's super, super important. And um, <laughs> it actually is like a bacteria culture in a Petri dish in that it starts really small, but that's the beginning of your culture at your startup. Um, it's super important. You need, you need to be thinking about that because uh, we've made the mistake of, for example, um, with people that are uh, no longer working with the roller because it's not the, it wasn't the right thing for them or us, um, and they weren't right, uh, culturally aligned with our values and the way we want to do things. Um, so you've got to be very careful, and particularly with your early hires, uh, actually our first employee is in the room. Um, and yeah, we're very happy, obviously, with him. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of set the tone uh, for what's to come. Focus is extremely important. Um, personally, I have ideas running my head nonstop, uh, and I have to remind myself to be like this guy. Um, focusing on one thing at a time. Um, otherwise, if you focus on too much, you're going to do a bad uh, job across many things as opposed to a good job of one thing. Um, so yeah, try. <laughs> it's hard. This is really hard, uh, but try and focus. Um, you should be embarrassed about your first product and any release that you have, actually. Um, this is the first mock-up that we made in paint. Um, yeah, uh, we weren't, we're not uh, technically um, gifted um, or skilled, and so we relied on a web design agency to begin with, so this is a wireframe, um, the best job of uh, what that person uh, could do with that and turn it into that. Uh, yeah, it was a funny experience. Um, <laughs> that was our website um, in 2011, 2012. Um, and this was our first set of content. Now, the underlying content is, was fantastic. Uh, it just didn't look good. Um, so yeah, so be embarrassed. Um, I am. Um, <laughs> next thing, cash is king. Um, I don't think we thought enough about this to begin with. Uh, maybe we did in, um, inherently, but not purposefully. And I would encourage you to purposely think about it, because you don't want to be caught in a situation where you're uh, up against a wall and running out of cash. Um, that it's a terrible thing for you and your business and the people in it. Um, so a um, couple of bits of advice, uh, run your, know your ins and outs very well, uh, but also model out different scenarios. And the easiest way to do that is to do three types of scenarios. A base case scenario, which you think, it, what's your best guess of what will happen? Do a bull case, which is a, a, if everything went well, uh, what would happen? And a bear case, which is uh, what if everything bad happens. Um, and you can get a good, it really helps with your planning. So cash is king. Um, please pay attention to it. Uh, reading. This is, I, I wish I did a lot more of this. Um, and because um, it's better to learn from other people's mistakes than make them yourself um, the first time around. So I, um, and at a roller, we do a monthly book club. Uh, so we do a lot of reading at the company and, and personally. Um, I get a lot of mine from audiobooks and podcasts uh, and some physical books. 
And I thought I'd just share a, a book list, but maybe we'll share these uh, afterwards. Um, I, I wish that these books were around or I had read them uh, when I was uh, in the early days of Edrollo. Uh, there's some, some great things you can learn from these books here. Um, from podcast list, uh, you can learn from this, but also it's, it's a great way for me to tune out and um, also hear other people's stories and uh, what their, yeah, their experiences. Uh, time. This is, yeah, very, this is, uh, I've used the word super six times on this slide. Um, time is very precious and actually understanding how to spend your time is very, very powerful. And uh, that is leading me into the second part of this presentation where I'm going to be talking about time and time management in particular. Um, but hopefully you can take away some actual uh, things that you can do. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about one part of what someone has coined the Edrollo operating system. And uh, essentially what I'm going to focus on is uh, being transparent with your time, with yourself, with your team, um, and, uh, and getting the most out of your time. Uh, there's a great blog post, so there's a bit more background information if you wanted to follow up on this. Um, Nick Crocker, who's one of the partners at Blackbird Ventures, um, wrote about this. He's been running on the Edrollo operating system for a year now. And what he had to say in part of that blog post was that he feels that he's 30 to 40 percent more productive with his time. Uh, but most importantly, he actually knows where his time's going. Um, so um, thinking about where this all fits in the scheme of things, um, we like to uh, apply mental models at, at Rollo. Um, and so where this fits, uh, you know, whether or not you want to focus on time management, it's probably a strategic decision. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time there, but hopefully I inspired you to, to think about that. Um, where I will be spending time is how to implement it and, or how we implement it and execute on that. Um, so why we do it is because we uh, believe this fact, because it is a fact, uh, that time is finite and v therefore very precious. Uh, in my opinion, it's probably the most precious resource we have. Um, and we're distracted constantly um, with your startup founder hat on. Um, you're getting pulled in different directions. Um, Slack messages pinging you, your friends on WhatsApp uh, who, I don't know what they're doing at a barbecue when you're working, distracting you. Um, you know, other things, meetings, trying to get your first customer. Um, there's all these things happening. And a lot of the time, I think that one takes up a lot of your time, email. Uh, I could spend a whole day in my inbox if I let myself, but I don't. <clears throat> so um, we believe that we need to be deliberate with how we spend our time. And the good thing is there is a solution. And it's looking in the mirror at yourself. Um, and we do that at Ed Rollo. Um, so I'll quickly step out what we do and go into, into more detail. Uh, the way we get the most out of our time is that we create uh, a personal roadmap for each employee for the next three months on average. So we actually know what they're going to be working on within three months. And then we also know that if those things that they're working on align to the goals of the business for those three months and longer. Um, from a weekly perspective, we do those three things. We plan a week in advance um, and kind of like a sprint process that a, a tech team would run, uh, but on a week uh, cadence. And uh, we identify what we're going to do, how we'll do it, and report back and reflect on it as well in a very open and uh, vulnerable way. Um, but it all starts with tracking your time. So that's when I'm going to spend uh, the first part of this presentation here, on this part, sorry, um, about how we track our time and why. And I put that comment there, it's not like an accountant or a lawyer because they do it in six minute blocks. Uh, we do it in probably minute, maybe second blocks. Um, we use accurate timestamps. Um, so uh, we found it to be really useful. Um, and this quote from Paul Graham, uh, co-founder or founder of Y Combinator, uh, is fantastic. You make what you measure. And I believe if you're not measuring your time and how you're using your time, you're, um, you, you don't know where you're going. Um, so I'm going to give you a snap it, snippet into uh, a past uh, report. Um, I use a tool called Toggle. It's free. Uh, you can use a Google Sheet. Um, but I know uh, day by day how much time I've spent actually on work. So this excludes lunch breaks, toilet breaks, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I can actually track yeah, where my time's going. So I get a sense of how many hours I'm working a day and if I'm feeling burnt out, maybe it's because I worked a 13 hour day. Um, and you can learn a lot of these things. Uh, but it goes even deeper than that. You can actually see, depending on how you bucket your time sheet, you can actually see um, which sort of areas of the business are sucking up your time. Uh, so I know now that email on average takes between three to five hours of my week. So I need to set aside that time and I, I can't do anything about that, it's just a reality. Um, but what I'm going to focus on here is, uh, in this case, I was focused on uh, expanding the business into New South Wales. And I spent, uh, I don't have my glasses, I think it's 22 hours uh, that week on, on that. 
Um, and, but I can see where those 22 hours were actually spent. Um, so uh, in this case, um, as part of my planning process, I said I'd spend two hours uh, on this part of uh, the expanding into to New South Wales, but I ended up spending close to seven. Um, but I've got a live understanding of should I be, and I, a check-in mechanism of should I be spending more than two hours on this? And in this case, I obviously thought uh, I should be because uh, it was important. So um, first order impact of time tracking is that you actually get to see where your time is being spent. Um, and the second or consequences, there's good and bad. Uh, the good is that you can be very critical of disruption. So if an email comes in you think is important, but you're working on something that is more important, you can actually say, actually, no, I'm not going to reply to that email, or I'm not going to reply to that Slack message because I need to focus. Um, next thing is it enables you to reflect on your week. You can actually get to see patterns that I told you about my, uh, for example, how much time I spend in email. Um, and uh, you can plan better. Um, the one thing to look out for is that you're, you tend to be, with this, you're focusing on output. And that might detract from the fun you're having. So just take this with a, uh, keep that in mind if you do start tracking your time. You have fun um, while you're spending time on, on your startup. Um, I'll just jump to the top part now uh, about um, the roadmaps because this is really cool. So if we track our time, we can actually make a really strong roadmap on how we're going to spend our time for the next three months. And this is what you, you learn what's, what's possible to achieve. Um, and you can align that to your goals. So uh, this is a, a spreadsheet. Sorry, it's, it's a bit small. Um, I'm happy to share any of these as well with anyone. Um, but um, literally, that's a week by week in the columns. And we can actually see here up the top, you can't see the detail, but um, how many hours I could work um, versus how much I'm forecasting to spend. So you can actually see, OK, I've got this project coming up. I need to set aside 10 hours. And what, what do I need to move to make that happen? Um, you can actually then compare actual versus forecast if you want. Um, and the first order um, impacts of that is that you can actually prioritize really well around what you want to achieve. And um, the second order impact uh, is it's across a business that you can prioritize, make sure everyone's aligned as well. And that's obviously more important as you grow as a, as a company. But uh, getting this, I guess, embedded in your culture and way of doing things is important in the early days as well. Um, on the middle section there, um, uh, it's kind of, yeah, as I said, it's kind of like a, a, a sprint process. So I'm going to step you through how we do it. Um, and I love this quote, if you pl fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, it's so true. Uh, you could be spinning wheels on things that uh, mean nothing to you or your business uh, so easily. So be aware that that can happen. So what we do is um, within, our, within certain teams, um, or within all our teams, you send uh, an individual contributor sends an email to their team uh, um, with a reflection. So that goes out every week. And at the top of that email, uh, typically, there's a high-level plan of what they're trying to achieve. And a plan is uh, actually uh, probably more beneficial or the most beneficial to the person writing it. Um, but you will get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, so knowing what you'd need to do at a high level, um, I know I refer, refer back to this uh, to remind myself um, every day. Um, and then there's the, the detailed plan. So what does that break down into and with time allocations um, on where I'm going to spend the time. Then we take it a step further in blocking out time in our calendars. Uh, this is hit and miss. Some people do it, some people don't. Uh, it just depends on how their, their flow works. But um, a lot of people do block out time for the things that they say they're going to do. Um, and that helps you uh, protect your time. Um, and the next part is that we, by sending this email, we're actually encouraging vulnerability, which is an amazing thing uh, because it fosters trust. And um, now we're a team of 70 or 80 plus people. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to see from the sidelines now. All these different people across the business really sharing and offering support and, and to help each other. Um, yeah, I couldn't be prouder of, of that fact. Um, so the way that looks is um, 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10 looks pretty bad. But initially, we, we reflect on mo our motivation levels. Um, now, 5 is average. So anything plus or minus 1 is, we could say, one standard deviation plus or minus, and then plus or minus two. So you, to be a seven, you've, something's really got to be going well. To be a three, uh, there's obviously something bad. But it's a good signal uh, to this individual's uh, manager to talk about in their one-on-one, -on -one, um, or to te their team members to reach out, like, hey, um, can I help you? Like, is that deadline? Can I help you with that deadline? I can push stuff aside. Um, so uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So motiv uh, motivation and why, basically why. Um, then we 
reflect on our performance and kind of a deep dive into what we learnt from the week and try not to make the same mistake um, uh, into the future. So we do, again, do the same sort of thing and, and why, what we think we did well, what we think we did poorly, uh, and also think about in the context of what we set, the plan we set for ourselves. So that's what that bottom part there is. Um, do we do what we say we do, essentially? And um, as soon as you write a plan, I should just make this clear, it's probably um, defunct. But without it, uh, you don't know where you're going. So things can, curveballs come up. Um, I'm not saying that they don't. Um, it's okay for curveballs, but at least you've got a plan to refer back to to say, should I let that curveball actually affect what I said I would do this week? Um, ah, another, another side point here. We've also added a couple of other things where we get people to reflect on their enjoyment uh, and why, and also the stress levels they're feeling. So we've got a, a good couple of markers on, on how people are feeling. Um, so the effects of that, uh, first order, is that you actually have clarity around how you can achieve your weekly goals and therefore your three-term, uh, sorry, three-month goals. And second order there, I've mentioned it, is you've got a culture of sharing, vulnerability and um, support amongst your team. Um, so to recap, uh, this is what we do at Ed Rollo. Uh, and we believe that time is super, super precious. So the one actionable thing that you can take away is to start tracking your time and actually see uh, where you're spending your time. You'll be amazed. You don't need to do it in a complex way like what I've shown you. Just start by bucketing it, email, admin, uh, bookkeeping, whatever. Uh, just buckets and, and see where your time's going. And do it for a week or two weeks. And, uh, but don't give up if, you, um, if it, it gets difficult. Um, in terms of time, I actually did sneak in a second <laughs> takeaway. Um, um, so, um, uh, and I can go deeper in this in Q&A as well, but um, anything can benefit from process and rules, and I believe communication can, and I feel like we've got a very interesting way of doing that. Um, it came because of Slack, actually, uh, or HipChat first, where this thing was just pinging us nonstop, and we thought, oh, this is just so distracting. So we actually put in some guidelines around how to utilise different communication channels, being Slack and so forth. Um, what I'm going to show is an example of how we email at Ed Rollo. Um, I've redacted a lot of stuff here because it's, yeah, you don't need to say that. But to, to get the gist of it, at the, the top of the email, um, what we actually do is tag people with key things that they need to do. So in this case, everyone needs to read it. There's action items for those uh, four individuals. And then it's just FYI for Lauren and Ben. Um, then within the body of the email, um, we actually tag, tag uh, draw attention to what needs to happen. Um, so that's just an example of a process we've put in place that seems to work really well. Uh, it really means that it's very difficult to let the ball drop. Um, it still happens, but it's a lot more difficult uh, if you operate that way. So I thought that was a, a, a second one that I um, a tip that I would share. Uh, as I said, please ask me any questions uh, in the Q and A. I'd love to answer and, and assist any way I can. So thank you so much for your time.